After six years of development, we finally have our first real taste of Halo Infinite. And boy, is it succulent. No problem. Oh, 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 that looked really painful. That it did. That it did, Robbie Damon. That did look painful. No scope. Hey everyone, my name is Fixer, and as we enter day two of the Halo Infinite technical test, I'm going to list off my favorite things about the slice of the game we have to play with so far. I live streamed my first impressions of the game last night, so if you want some long form gameplay and discussion, I'll leave a card to that above. I'm definitely going to be streaming as much of this game as I possibly can throughout the rest of the year, so if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on. So let's jump into the first thing that I really like about this technical test. It's addictive. We're one day in on the test and we've only gotten to play with easy bots on one map. And yet I haven't been able to stop playing. Seriously, I stopped working on this video just to boot up the game like four times now. The game feels so crisp and the controls and movement are really tight and the guns are really fun to use. All of the sandbox elements you expect from a Halo game are here, they're dialed up to 11, and they feel really fun to use. It feels great to pull off a sick play with a power weapon or a piece of equipment. And if the game launches with a wide variety of maps and modes, I think players are going to be really happy with the offering at launch, especially for a price tag of free. Number 2. Graphics and Performance This game is made with old consoles in mind. So not the new Xbox Series X, but this game was also available on the original Xbox One and everything in between. This is great for everyone, and it also means that a wider range of PCs are going to be able to play. I have what I would consider a mid-range build by today's standards, and the game's performing well for me so far. For whatever reason, the technical test seems to be locked at 60 FPS for me, but I'm able to hit that 60 on medium settings and hold it there without any issues. Number three, the visibility. Subscribers of mine who have been here for a while will know that I often complain about poor visibility in games and that I'm incredibly critical of Call of Duty's recent entries and the poor visibility that comes with them. It's very hard to see enemies in those games. Well, I'm happy to report that visibility in Halo Infinite gets an A plus from me. All allies and enemies have a colored glow around them that pulls them out of the background and makes them very easy to spot. Not to mention, in a win for accessibility, you can customize what color your team and the enemy team outline is, so you can change it to a different shade of red and blue if you need that for your particular eyesight. Number 4. Music and Sound Many old school Halo fans were hoping that Infinite would return to the Halo Combat Evolved roots in terms of music. That is, exploring a mysterious Halo ring with bits of atmospheric horror music and a little bit of rock thrown in during the action sequences. Well, there's only a few tracks in Infinite that we can hear right now, but they nailed it. Just listen to these tracks. They perfectly nail that sense of wonder and atmosphere of exploring a halo ring while also including some really cool synthy rock sounds that really just get your blood pumping. Oh, and the guns sound awesome. Every gun is super fun to shoot and use because of how great they sound. I mean, listen to this sniper rifle. Chilling spree. Beautiful. Are low. Oh, and as an even added bonus, the audio is also very balanced. I don't feel like I'm losing clarity in anything whenever an explosion goes off or I pick up a weapon. All the sound effects are balanced very well. You can hear footsteps, you can hear what's going on. It's great, and a lot of games recently seem to be throwing audio balancing out the window, and I'm very happy that 343 took it seriously. My fifth favorite thing about this test is the bot modes, or should I say the uncle modes? That's kind of an inside joke. But what I mean is, Halo Infinite is going to have bots for the first time in Halo. 
which means that if you are more of a casual player or aren't used to playing PvP multiplayer, you can warm up or practice or just have fun comp stomping bots in all of your favorite multiplayer maps and modes, which is a great win for everyone. Number six, customization. If there's one thing I know about Halo fans, it's that they love to trick out their Spartans. And even this technical alpha shows us more customization options than any other Halo game I've seen. Yes, even more options than Reach. My only concern about this is the potential to be nickel and dimed by limited time bundles in the shop. Remember, this is a free to play game after all. They're gonna try to get our money for those sweet, sweet skins. I just hope that they have enough free to earn gear in the game at launch to prevent everyone from looking like a default skin from Fortnite for the first four months after release. And finally, my number seven favorite thing about this technical test is just all of the new stuff that came from 343's creativity. Look, I was one of those people who was very scared this was just going to play like if they reskinned Halo 5 to look like Halo Reach, but I'm happy to say I was wrong. This feels like its own very unique, very competent entry to the franchise. Sprint returns, which is gonna bother some people, but it doesn't feel jarring to use at all. It really doesn't change your speed by all that much, so I feel like it's not going to see a ton of use. Some people are mad that the Magnum isn't in the game, but honestly, the sidekick pistol that they replaced it with is just really fun to use, and I have no complaints there. And the skewer is a brand new weapon that nobody saw coming, but it's super satisfying to land a kill with. And the heat wave is super fun too. Look, my point is, just have some faith in 343's creativity. They know what they're doing. Everything I've seen so far reeks of polish and respect for the source material. Even though it's still an alpha, there are some glitches, you can see a lot of polish around the edges. They're doing a great job and I can't wait to see what they have in store for launch day. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you're always alerted when I go live with Halo streams and more Halo content in the future. And drop a comment and let me know if you made it into this test and what you think of it. All right, everyone, peace out.